Okay, university, hmm, it can be challenging sometimes, but you wanna make sure that you get the best mark that you can possibly get. So let me share with you what I did in order to get a first class in my computer science degree. What's up guys, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, this channel is all about career, university and lifestyle. In this video, I'm going to share some of the habits that I did that really helped me to secure a first class in my computer science degree. And just to let you know, I studied computer science at Loughborough University, which at the current time of recording is within the top 10 of all universities in the UK for computer science. It actually moved down a little bit from the year before, but nonetheless, it's still in the top 10. So for whatever university you're at, these habits habits should really help you to secure the best grade that you could possibly achieve. But before we get into the video, if you could subscribe to this channel, hit the like button and leave a comment down below, that would really help the video. And also please get at my Instagram, which you should see somewhere here. But yeah, with that, let's get straight into the video. So I'm going to go through six things that really helped me to achieve my first year grade. The last one, in my opinion, is the most important one. So make sure you stick around right until the end of the video so that you don't miss it. But before I start sharing the points, let me just give you a quick overview of myself. So as I mentioned before, I studied computer science at Loughborough University. I did a four year course. One of those years was an industrial placement, which I did at a telecoms company. And now I'm working in real estate for a little bit, but my career is going to be in commercial law. So there's a little bit of variation in terms of my career path, but I do have fond memories and some not so fond memories of studying computer science. I actually finished my degree last month and I actually got my results at time of recording earlier this week. If you're watching this like a year later, then I would have got my results like last year or... <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, let's go straight into the first point. Writing tasks down every week and ticking them off. I mean, it's as simple as that. You know, I had a notebook in which I would write down all of the things that I had to do that week. And this included my university work as well as extracurricular work or things that weren't related to university. And I wouldn't really put a time frame on these to-do points, but I just knew that I had to do them before the end of the week. And for me, that worked really well. And I would go ahead and tick them off one by one as I completed them. And I think if you have a system of ticking things off, it does really help you with satisfaction at the end of the week. And it also gives you direction of what you need to do so that you're not kind of clueless as the week is going by. You know what you're supposed to do and you do it. Despite it sounding really simple, I think it's such a valuable habit to develop. So yeah, let me now go on to the second point, which is scheduling work across the weeks and starting work on them as soon as possible. So this really applies for assignments that are given to you at university. And I'm talking about this point in that context. So one thing that I was doing whilst I was at university was whenever I got an assignment, the day I got it or the day after or quite soon after I got it, I would sit down and try to schedule in terms of weeks when I would get different parts of the assignment done. And this worked really well for me because I had a good idea of where I needed to be each week in order to submit my assignment on time. If you try and micromanage yourself and be like, I'm going to start this piece of work at 9 a.m. and finish it at 10.02 a.m., that doesn't really account for errors or mistakes or delays that can happen in your work. And so it won't really help you to feel productive because you're going to look back at the hour that you were doing work for and think, well, I didn't really make that much progress because I was trying to fix this error. So instead, I found that scheduling my assignments over weeks would allow me psychologically to feel as though I was making progress progress. Now the third habit that I would highly recommend is having organized folders on your laptop or computer. So when you get to university or if you're at university already you'll know that there can be a lot of work and it's really important to stay organized on your computer because that's probably where the majority of your work is going to be especially if you study computer science. If you study something like art then perhaps not and it's really important to stay organized so that you can locate things quickly and easily and not feel like everything's a mess. So yeah, I would highly recommend that you organize your files in a way that you can navigate them easily. Now, the fourth habit that I would highly recommend that you develop is just doing something every single day. So I think this really applies to people who feel as though they procrastinate a lot. Doing something small is much better than doing nothing. So if you feel unmotivated or you feel as though you just wanna chill for whatever reason, but you know that you need to work, then what I would recommend 
is that you do just a little bit, like literally set a timer and do some work until the timer ends. And then after that, if you still feel unmotivated and you still feel like not doing anything, then you know, have some time to yourself. But it's really important that you try to do something even if it's small every single day. And I think this point works quite well with the previous point because if you're giving yourself a week to make progress, providing that you don't just leave everything to the last minute on that week, it should give you some breathing space in case you feel overwhelmed or unmotivated because those feelings can really exist whilst you're at university. Now, the fifth thing that I would recommend is having a balanced life as much as possible, especially as a computer science student. With programming, there are like to be times when you are trying to find an error in your code and it takes hours and hours and hours to find and I myself was in that situation many times whilst I was doing my final year project and it's really easy to just get sucked into the computer and sit down for hours without breaks to try and make something work but I would recommend as much as possible to have breaks from that because it's it's not really healthy <laughs> it's not really healthy at all I wouldn't recommend it but you know it's computer science so but what I tried to do was whenever I had a shift that was just crazy in terms of hours at the end of it or whenever I would figure out what what the issue was or whenever I improved something how I wanted to improve it I would literally go out for a walk because it's nice to feel the real world instead of the computer world after many hours have passed. Also treat yourself to like nice food because I know at university, especially if you're doing hours and hours on end, food, at least for me, can become like a secondary priority. And, and so I'll just eat to give me energy to keep on going rather than thinking about how can I spice it up and make it an amazing experience. Because, you know, when you have nice food, I don't know about you, but that can really lift up my mood. So now let's go on to the final point, which in my opinion is the most important, especially when it comes to in-person exams. And this is using active recall to revise. So just to let you know, when I was revising for my in-person exam in my final year, and also when I was revising for my in-person exams in previous academic years at university, I would always use a software called Anki, and I've talked about it quite a lot on this YouTube channel. So essentially, the software will show you flashcards at the perfect time so that you can remember the contents of the flashcard over weeks and months. So it gets ingrained in your long-term memory. As an example, in my final year for my only in-person exam, I didn't write any notes, I didn't do anything like that, I just made flashcards using Anki and when the exam came about I was able to recall so much information because of this revision technique which I find a lot more efficient than making notes and then trying to remember the notes that you made because the software basically optimizes your ability to recall information by showing you the flashcards at the right time but it's really important that you go onto it every day so that you know when you need to revise flashcards but when I got to university my days of writing notes to revise for exams were pretty much over and I always felt really confident when it came to exams especially exams that required you to remember information from the course but yeah that's all for this video I hope you found it useful and like I said if you have any questions do leave a comment down below or message me on my Instagram and I'll get back to you but for now that's all for this video thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time for another video